Today I'm going to show you guys how to build a DIY optical auto top off for about 30 bucks. Hey guys, Devin with Reef Dudes. Now you've all seen those kind of fancy optical top offs that have become up the last year or so. And they're actually pretty simple and I'm going to show you guys how to make a basic one. So if you guys got a little bit of electronic skills, or even if you don't, I'll kind of teach you guys as I go and show you how I built mine. I just did a quick one on a breadboard, just kind of a proof of concept, and so far so good. So I'm going to make the actual product, and I'm going to show you guys so you can make your own and follow along. Uh, so just to start out, there's actually a very basic circuit. We got a 12 volt power source coming in, it goes into a 5 volt regulator. Now we're dropping to 5 volts because that's what this sensor takes. Our optical sensor runs off 5 volts. Um, now how this works is there's a little infrared sensor in there and it refracts the light back at itself. And when it, the water refracts the light and when it's out of water, it kind of breaks that little refraction and it reconnects itself and completes the circuit. So as you can see, it's very accurate. When we take it out of water, our pump kicks on right away. Put it back in, it stops. Now the only one little caveat with this, um, very precise, because I mean the water drops a millimeter will kick on. Um, if you put it sideways, it will kick on right away. Sometimes if it's 100% vertical, it may take a few seconds is because if there's a drop of water sitting there, it'll have to wait for a couple seconds till it falls off. So if you want it instant, you put it sideways, if you put it straight down, which is what I'll probably do, you know, it will still kick on after that drop falls. So still pretty darn accurate. So very simple circuit, a couple resistors, five volt regular, a little MOSFET, optical sensor, and a dosing pump. So let's hop on the computer and I'll show you kind of a easy little circuit diagram of how I actually make it and then we'll build it and get this on the tank. So, so let's show you guys how I actually built this. We're going to use this little circuit diagram just to kind of help visualize it. It's a little easier looking at a little mess of wires on the breadboard. Um, so this is just going to sub in for our 12 volt power supply. Uh, next we have a 470 ohm and a 1k resistor. We have our 5 volt regulator, a MOSFET. That we're going to pretend this is our optical sensor and we're going to pretend this little motor is our doser. So to start out we connect our just power and ground so these are just putting the wires on the breadboard. And I can actually change the color of these so I'm going to do that to match up just to make it easier for you guys to see. So this is our ground which is black and this one will be our red for power. So we got our 12 volt power. Um, the first thing we're going to do so Looking at our circuit for the optical sensor, it wants 5 volts. So what we're going to do is use a 5 volt voltage regulator. And to do that, so looking at this, the pin number 1. So when you're knowing which pin's which, um, it will be flat on the back and a little bump on the front. The bump on the front is the way I always look at it. And then I'll have the writing. So LM7805 is the part we're going to be using. So it goes input, ground, and output. So input is going to be our 12 volts. So let's just connect this straight up to here. So 12 volts in and our ground. And let's change the color, colors to make it easy for you guys, red. And the last pin is our output. So our output, we're just gonna bring over to here for now and that can be white. Okay, so our output. Now from here, we need to take our five volt power and connect it to our optical sensor. So we're gonna pretend this right here is our optical sensor. And looking at the diagram, uh, so we got pin blue, and so blue and white wire both go to that, both go to five volts. So here's our blue, uh, blue wire, and there's our white. Okay, so when you guys, if you're using a breadboard, if you've never used one, each one of these rows connects together. So those two pins are basically joined. I'll do a little jump wire. Okay, so these two are both going to five volts. Now on the bottom of the sensor we have a red, our red wire, which goes to a her. So red wire goes to a 390 ohm resistor, and then the yellow wire goes to the signal output. And after that, it goes through a 10k resistor into ground. So we're gonna take this guy and drag it over. Now this is gonna be. Our, doo -doo 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 -doo. So this will be our 390 ohm resistor. So I'm just going to put this guy here and that's just going to connect And that color of wire was red. And that goes to ground. So dropping that down here, that's the exact same as connecting it to that black wire over there. So let's just make that black. 
Now the next pin we had is a yellow pin. Now yellow goes our signal output as well as through resistor into ground. So I'm going to put this guy over here. We'll drag our resistor down. And this one's our yellow wire from the optical sensor. And this guy also then goes to ground. So they both go straight down here. They're both connected to our negative wire or our ground on our 12 volt regulator. And do 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 do. So let's change it to black. So ground, ground, ground. Now for the sensor, the output comes off of the yellow wire. So this is our sensor. So now our output, we're going to bring this down. This is our MOSFET. And how this one works is we have our gate, drain, and source. Now the gate is basically like our switch. So we're going to take that yellow wire from here and connect it to our gate. So that's going to be kind of the thing to say turn on or off. Now looking at this, we have our drain, which is our output, and our source is where the connection is coming from. So the source, we're going to hook this guy straight up to ground. So this guy goes to ground, so our black wire. And the ground, so what is happening is when it flicks the switch, it's basically connecting the ground. Now we have our source wire here. So our source wire, our drain, sorry, is going to connect to the pump. So our drain, so it's basically when this wire is active, it's going to go from the source to the drain. So we're turning that out now. So this is going to ground out our motor. And the only thing left to do is connect this guy to positive. So go bloop, and we'll turn that to red. So this is how you wire it up. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, red. So there you go. There's our circuit. Fairly easy to do. I mean, might look a little complicated if you've never done it before. But just quick over cap. We got our 5 volt voltage regulator. You take the red and black wire, connect it to the first two pins. The pin 3 connects to the blue and white pin. So you can just slice, splice them together. You can solder them together on your optical sensor. The red wire goes through a 390 to 470 ohm resistor, then to ground. The yellow wire goes to a resistor, then to ground. And then we tap into that yellow wire before the resistor. That goes to the gate on our MOSFET. And then the second one is the drain, which is the output of the MOSFET, goes to the negative on the motor or the ground. And the source, where you just plug to the ground. Now on the motor, we just have our drain from the MOSFET and our power. So pretty simple circuit. And when you put it all together, we got our cool little super duper simple auto top off. Now using these little dosing pumps, they're pretty easy to do. Um, just to quickly show you again, that's our, our, our basic basic circuit. This is kind of a messy, more stuff than I need on the board, but kind of simple way to show you guys. So I'm going to start this up and make it. Now the only next thing to do, like it is a very small part, so you can just pick up one of these little project boxes. You can solder everything together and put it one of these and just literally have a power on the side and connect it to your dosing pump. So I think I might actually make a little bit bigger housing that can hold made 3D print it, made find a little box, but I'm gonna see if I can put the motor circuit everything in it. So it's just one little tiny box with an optical sensor coming up. And I think this will be a nice compact little auto top off. So I'm gonna get to building and if you guys want to build your own, I'll have the parts list below. Otherwise follow along as I build mine. So soldering really isn't that hard. I use this one of these little blank through hole breadboards and soldered on all my pieces. I tried to line it up so all the parts and pins are pretty much in a row, kind of based off the breadboard design. If you guys haven't soldered before, it really isn't that hard. Um, if you have a soldering iron, you literally just touch the solder to it and once it's heated up, it just melts right around it and makes that solid connection. So it's a really easy way to attach wires and whatnot together. I did use a little pin header on this guy just so I can easily plug it in. Um, yeah, super quick and easy solder job. If you're very new to electronics, I mean that schematic will hopefully help you guys out. And if you haven't, you can feel free to ask any questions in the description below. As always, I'm always here to help you guys out. Now I just want to give a quick shout out to my buddy Kyle because he actually had did a similar little dosing pump and he had a 3D printed house kind of already made so I took his model and modified it a bit for my project and it worked pretty well. So as you can see it just sits right on top of the cap of my auto top pop jug. Uh, the motor bolts right into the front and it's extremely compact it just the cap holds it and there's going to be like a little acrylic tube that goes down that's going to suck from the bottom of the jug. So let's find a couple little screws and we'll bolt the motor on. So once we got the motor in, just looking on the side, I have a switch that I put on just if I want to turn it off. I'm doing tank maintenance or something. And also the power plug. The hole was a little small, so I just had to drill a bit bigger. 
not a big deal. Um, I use a stepper drill bit for this. These things are super handy. If you guys have been following me for a while, I also use the same things for drilling the holes in the DIY Voss water bottle dosing containers. Um, it's another super cool project, and I'll link that one at the end of this video if you guys haven't seen that one yet. So once all the holes are drilled, I poke the board inside to get all my switches, everything mounted, and I just have to solder up the little connections to the motor, the switches, and the power wire within the hole. Um, to put in a switch, you literally just split one of the wires off of the power plug and just put one side of the switch, each pin on the switch, and you're good. So super easy to switch into it, the mix. Then once everything's just about done, I just use a couple dabs of hot glue just to hold the sensor wire in place and the little board in the back, just so nothing's poking around or shaking around inside and potentially a pin hitting something. Now at the very bottom, I'm using a quarter inch acrylic tube, so I had to make the hole just a smidge bigger so the acrylic hose just fit in. Now I got the acrylic hose to just fit inside so that quarter inch tube just fit through the hole in the bottom, so it goes right down through the mount and the inlet on the dosing pump just plugs right into it. Now you guys see at the bottom, it's very, very sleek little compact unit. It's gonna look great, so let's get this baby installed on the tank. So I've now had the DIY dosing pump on the tank for about a week and it's been working great. I just wanna give it a good test run before I share this video. So now if we open up the cabinet, we can see the little pump is in there, super compact. So it's just in the top of the lip of this, so got our little acrylic tube going down. Uh, you got the little hole inside the container. I'm gonna plan on putting a float valve in, so when I I can just plug my RODI line into this, I don't have to worry about overfilling, if I'm busy doing other stuff. So, super simple little pump. If we come to the top of the tank, um, the Red Sea tank does come with an auto top off, which were great. However, I want something that lasts a little longer, so I built this guy. My three dosing plug pumps are gonna, lines are gonna plug in right there. And there's optical sensor, you can see right when it comes out of water, you can see it automatically dripping and refilling the tank. Very precise, very small, sleek little setup. And now the tank should be able to go weeks without being topped off. Um, without having to refill the top off, which is going to be great. So it turned out to be a very sleek build. Pretty simple build, I'd say. Um, if you have any basic electronic skills, you should be good. If you're 100% new electronics, hopefully I can give you guys a bit of a guide as I went. If you do have any questions, as always, let me know in the description below. And if you enjoyed this, smash that like button. And if you're new, make sure you guys subscribe to keep to more great videos from Reef Deeds.